Hi there. We continue with our um, weekly assessment quiz number two. Um, quiz number two will cover this uh, 3.2 night session and uh, so control system frequency response. And uh, as we talked about before, we use a step signal, impulse, or ramp signal to apply to a control system and see the response. And uh, but uh, in most cases, the uh, external disturbances were described by a sign solo input. Uh, so that's uh, basically we get the sign signals applied to the control system. The special cases of the sign solo we study is because the <coughs> first and the second order of systems response to this signal will be also um, can be described using another sign solo signal with a, a different gain. Uh, so the gain value will be changed after the control system. And also uh, the phase angle uh, will be changed after uh, transmit through the control system. So for the sensor input phaser, uh, we have two expressions. Um, as we study the complex number, you can see we can uh, there is two description of that uh, sensor inputs. One is we use a phaser. So you can see in this complex number, uh, we have x value, y value, uh, which y is a complex component. This x is a real component. So for this phaser, uh, we can use the amplitude. Uh, so that's basically we use the amplitude with the phase angle to describe this same value. Another one is using the complex number to represent. Um, so we have x plus jy. That's uh, also described this one. So these two uh, the expression uh, you have to um, convert uh, these two um, very uh, familiar with the conversion uh, so that's x is v cosine phi y is v sine phi and uh, then if we know x plus jy and the amplitude is square root of x square plus y square and the phi is reverse tangent function y over x convert these two uh, familiar with the conversion of these two as we talk about uh, when we do the Multiplications, this one is a better choice. When we do the addition subtractions, this one is a better, easy to calculate. So I just ignore this one. So continue with this one, frequency response of first order system. And in this one, we see if we, uh, this is just derive the expression using the J omega. Uh, so let's see how we derive this one. Anyway, uh, so you can see we get a y over x, that's uh, our transfer function input over, uh, output over input uh, can be described use this equation. So the difference of this one with our Laplace transform, remember that one is we have the the first order system uh, transform is 1 over 1 plus tau s. Think before we have the gain g could be another value. So here it's 1. Uh, this is for this system has this. Uh, this is the first order system has this transform function. This is quite similar uh, to previous we studied the first order system. The only difference is we change the s with j omega. So if we apply uh, s equal to this j omega, we will have this one. So once we have this one, we call this one, we have a frequency response function of this first order system. And then uh, because this j is under the uh, denominator, so you can see the denominator is a complex number. What we're trying to do here is we try to eliminate that uh, complex number in the denominator, but uh, rather put it on the uh, nominator. 
So what we do here is we multiply by a 1 minus j omega tau. This is 1 plus j omega tau. So this term multiplied by this term will give us is 1 square minus this term's square. So 1 square is still 1. This term's square, so we can j square, which is equal to negative 1. So j square equal to negative 1. And so you can see we we actually, uh, the denominator now is a 1 plus omega square tau square. And this is a real number. So that's a denominator. Now the denominator is a complex number. So we can uh, put this one with the first term, give us the real number. And the second term is a complex number with j. And then um, we try to put this uh, expression into the phasor, uh, the phasor expression of this j, g, j, omega. So the amplitude, uh, x square, y square. So basically, we will do this x square and y square uh, class together and this uh, square root on this term. So we get this expression, and then also we get a reverse tangent function for the phase angle y over x. That's this term divided by this term. And then uh, because they, they cancel out to the denominator, so we get a negative omega tau a reverse tangent function on this one. So in the vector, uh, representation of this phasor, uh, we can use this one, this is um, the gain part, and this is the phase angle part. This is also called, this is the magnitude or the gain, and then phase angle uh, represents this one, uh, that's the, basically we will see the uh, phase angle legs uh, by some angle, depend on the tau and the omega. Um, we do not, we will come back to the examples later on uh, once we go to the quiz uh, and the calculation type questions. And continue with this one, this is a frequency response for a second order system. So basically in the same procedure we will, come, we will do, uh, it just uh, this one is more complex than the first order system. So what we do, we change the s into j omega, and then uh, so you see this is um, this is the real part of that number, real component. This is the um, imaginary components, and the same thing we multiply by this one minus this one, we get this square plus uh, this one square. And uh, here plus is because of j square equal to negative 1. Uh, so change this minus to plus. So we get the magnitude or the amplitude of that uh, vector e expression. And also we get a phase angle that expression for the second, second order system. So body plots, um, the purpose we are doing uh, the Frequency response is we want to draw the body plots. So later on, we we'll see we, we can use the body plots to tune a, a control system. So in that case, we need to know the magnitude plot and also the phase angle plots. We have two criteria to uh, fit uh, to tuning a control system. So the body plots can consist of two parts. Um, two graphs, uh, we have magnitude g, j omega over angular frequency omega, and then we have phase angle phi over angular frequency omega. And also, one more thing is we are not usually use the g, j omega to plot, but rather uh, we use the logarithm scales. So the magnitude is expressed in decibel units. Uh, use logarithm on this g, j, omega. In decibel, uh, that's we use 20 log uh, g, j, omega. So, so this one is a um, base 10 uh, logarithm. 
So this way, uh, so you can see we get a 20 log. This one, if the GJ omega equal to 10, this one is 20 decibel. 100 is 40 decibel. So 100 is basically 10 to the power of 2. So log 10 to the power of 2 is 2 times 20 is 40. So that's uh, easier uh, once we do the logarithm. Uh, the purpose of we do the logarithm is we can convert the multiplications into additions. Um, let's take a look on this one. So it is this this one. If it, if there is a question, ask for uh, hand drawing the body plots. And you take a look on this one. And uh, we continue with so this is the second order system, the body plots. So build, building up the body plots. Uh, so you see we have the um, if there is a series elements in the control system, the transfer function is the g1 times g2 times g3. Um, we just don't go through this one, but uh, we just go to the conclusion. If we have two systems, so you can see we just use magnitude of system 1, magnitude times mag magnitude of system 2, and then phi 1 plus phi 2. So that's, you can see the conclusion is simple. If we have serious uh, elements in a control system, we can do the OD plots by using the logarithm of g1 j omega plus logarithm G2 uh, J omega plus uh, logarithm G3 J omega. And then the phase angle, uh, we can just uh, simply add those three together. So this is using the uh, hand drawing of the body plus. Uh, that's before we, if we don't have the uh, MATLAB that uh, simulink, uh, we can do the hand drawing. This is just a basic element and then you use that uh, rules to handle the body plots.